So welcome everyone. We are now live from Crusaders of the Resistance headquarters. I am King Nico and good morning and good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching in the world. Today we have a very special show. We're joined by a special guest and I'm just going to jump into it. I want to present something quickly just so you guys could can see who we're, we're going to be talking with. So if you have any questions, get them ready. Let's start with some basic questions. The sky is in a world where it feels like nothing is as it seems. Blue. It's blue, of course. Oh, the sky's blue. The sky's blue. One plus one is two. 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 There's at least one truth we thought was indisputable. And the Earth is flat. Flat. The Earth is flat. My reality, my senses tell me that the Earth is flat and stationary. Or so I thought. But for the people attending the first Flat Earth International Conference here in Cary, North Carolina, their Earth is indisputably not round. Yeah, everybody here can agree on absolutely one thing, which is it is not a globe. For centuries, a flat Earth was accepted as certainty until science and sailboats said otherwise. The one rules of power is you never admit that there's someone bigger than yourself. But in 2015, this guy, Mark Sargent, posted his flat Earth clues. Part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the flat Earth system we live in. You're kind of the like father of this oh, movement. How, no. how would you? No, do You're that. the one who just started it all. I did not invent flat Earth. All I did was walk up to a door, point at it, say, you know what? I think there's some really interesting things on the other side of this, and check it out for yourself. If flat Earth is a university, you know, FEA then i would be the freshman recruiter people have tried yes the freshman recruiter pretty much the godfather of this uh movement the modern day flat earth movement so welcome everyone mr mark Sargent. hello <laughs> yes yeah, it's honestly great to finally have you here and meet you and speak to you yeah um, I wasn't yet woken up to Flat Earth in 2015, but as you can see, this conference went worldwide. And again, uh, one of the founders of it, along with other known names like Rob Skiba. Um, but yeah, when I did eventually finally take it seriously, because as you can see, it's mocked in the mainstream news. Yeah, uh, yeah it was um, life changing so thank you for all the work you've done to bring this to where it is and for speaking to us so uh i have some notes here let me just sure up. exciting times so yeah um flat earth where do we go now now that you're in your 10th year this is a whole decade of solid flat earth belief Oof. you you've traveled the world with this right so yeah um, we don't need to go into the whole beginnings of it. It's like, where, what can we do with it now? Because it's still, I find there's not many faces to the flat earth movement. Um, people are still um, in the closet. Um, they, they, they might want to believe it and understand and see the facts for what it is, but they're still very shy and scared to come out and, and admit it because of, you know, backlash from society and their social right. circles. Right. So that's something you've yourself has dealt with and you've managed to rise above it. Um, you've also have a Netflix documentary uh, that was released um, a couple of years after the conference in 2018. Yep. Uh, behind the curve. So uh, yeah, tell us a bit about, I guess, if you want to go from the conference to being approached by Netflix to do this documentary and, sure. you know, the pros and cons of it. Yeah. So when uh, the conference, by the way, was so amazing. Uh, I, I loved that it that it happened. Uh, we almost it almost didn't happen because in the beginning, you know, the conference was supposed to be the co-founders out there out in the Carolinas was going to be Brian Mullen from uh, uh, Balls Out Physics right. and Robbie Davidson. And Brian Mullins, sorry, Mullins or Mullins, doesn't really matter. The uh, uh, He was a structural engineer, a full-blown structural engineer. And what we did not know was if you have to get a certificate for something, you are beholden to that institution. So if you're a doctor or a lawyer, if you have to take a test and actually get something, a plaque on your wall, 
you are then part of that society and that society expects certain things from you. So what happened was we, uh, there were people that anonymous, other engineers that called in to the structural, the, the engineer society and said, look, we don't like what this guy's doing. And I'll be darned if that isn't what they did. The, the society called up the, the co-founder of the conference and said, we're thinking of pulling your license forever and removing your status as an engineer. And he had to lawyer up. And his lawyer said, yeah, you got to back away from this as quickly as possible. And then, you know, we'll be fine. And so he had to give it up. And then everything was turned over to Robbie Davidson. So so, at, and like the, treading, so getting involved in flat earth for some people is treading in dangerous waters, right? Potentially. Like, yeah. Like yeah. an engineer, if you have a professional, like if you're a, a any, if you're in academics, if you have a master's degree or higher in anything, I don't care what it is you are risking it by uh, admitting that, that you're in flat earth, which is why there's so few flat earthers that are in academia that are public about it. Yes, what you said earlier, 90% of our members are still in the closet. doesn't matter how, I mean, yes, there's a lot, there's new celebrities that come out and there's new media personalities that come out, but we're slowly but surely, you know, getting the scales tipped. Eventually, psychology says once it's easier to talk about flat earth than to not talk about it, you know, in, in public in mixed circles, uh, you're still going to get, you know, there's still the risk of getting crap from your friends and family and more importantly, your coworkers. It's really what, I, what I've heard over the years is the coworkers have the, the most peer pressure because you still got to go to work every day. And do you really want to be that guy? So you're not just a conspiracy guy anymore, which is ironic because Joe Rogan in the television show um, News Radio, he played the conspiracy guy, the the maintenance guy of the building who was also a conspiracy guy. And then go figure years later, he does, you know, the biggest podcast in the world. Why, what a big coincidence there. And he's anti-conspiracy. Uh, so sorry. So anyway, after the conference, what happened was, well, before the conference even happened, we were shooting the film. So what happened was well, I came back. I lived in Canada for a year, which was so interesting. And part of Canada, because I'm in Canada right now. I'm on the East Coast. I'm in Ontario. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was way, way. Funny thing. Okay, so I grew up in Washington State, which is on the border of British Columbia, right? Yeah. And we always knew about Vancouver, but most Americans don't know that there's we think most Americans think that Canada stops at Vancouver, right? There's nothing west of Vancouver and there's Victoria. There's a whole big chunk of land and, and a, a wonderful city called Victoria, otherwise known as Vic, right? It's Van and Vic. Yeah. And uh, there was a flat earth girl who came down and met me at a meetup in Seattle uh, back in ooh, 2015, end of 2015, beginning of 2016. And she asked if well, I wanted to come up and, and hang out with her up in Canada and make videos. It's like, yeah, I'm all about that. It, she was way too young for me. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, but at the same time, I mean, she was 29 and I, it was, it was a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong, but uh, there was a generation thing. I'm Gen X. She was a millennial. Yeah. It probably it wasn't going to work out. So, uh, but I spent a year up there and it was awesome. Uh, I was, you know, learned so much about Canada so much about Canada that, uh, and, and again, it's so much like America, especially in the British yeah. Columbia side over on your side, not as much. And when you get into, you know, Quebec, all bets are off because yeah, people are like in a different country, right? Yeah. You might as well be in a freaking <laughs> France offshoot, which is so weird. Um, so anyway, after I got back from that, uh, in the beginning of 26, 2017, 2017, cause I was there from 2016 to beginning of, yeah, 2017, the um, these small producers from Hollywood decided to contact me. And a lot of people don't know that when you're making a small production, you are you basically have day jobs that you know, there's all there's mainstream people, there's big directors. And then they're the, the people that are on the cusp that want to be directors. They want to be big producers. And so they have their little offshoots. And so they contacted me and they said, uh, hey, we're, we're thinking of doing a, a flat earth documentary. Do you think you can help us make that happen? And it's like, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Now, you're the man to talk to. Well, at the time, it's like, yeah, I was wired into everybody. And so why the heck not? Producers still call me to this day. It's like, hey, can you make such and such happen? It's like, yeah, if you want to do it. Most production things don't happen. You know, there's lots of producers with lots of ideas. Most of them don't happen. And so it's like, yeah, yeah, fine. You want to fly up. The odds of a movie like that actually working, actually even getting finished are low. So they came up, uh, it was a shoestring budget 
and uh, the director and I talked, and you know, we we kind of fleshed out what what could happen here. It was just going to be a human interest piece. And over the next seven months, you know, they got a hold of Bob and Jaron and Patricia and Chris Pontius and and Nathan and so on, and and traveled in different parts of the country. We went down to the Eclipse in Oregon. And then we went, uh, you know, I went and hang, hung out with Patricia and we did Kennedy Space Center. And then eventually we ended with the conference. And that's where things kind of took a turn for the weird. But at the same time, it worked out for us in the end because uh, there was this point during, and you saw it in Behind the Curve, where this 12-year-old kid was in the microphone talking to me on stage. And apparently the producers were really offended by this. They were really worried by this. It's like, you know, it's all fun and games. It's like, okay, we're going to have fun with the flat earthers. Wait a minute, wait, there's kids listening to this? Oh, no, 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 no. Right. And that's when, they, that's when they turned it against us. And we didn't even know until, uh, you know, they, they kept this really co close to the vest, meaning um, we didn't know until uh, there was a director's commentary on the iTunes version. And somebody said, yo, listen to the iTunes version. And it was like, listen, it was super, super boring until we got to that conference part. And all of them at the same time when that kid walk, walked to the microphone, it's like, this is when we had to take a stand against flat earth. It's like, what? Why? And, and they never told us. And so, but the problem, good, good and bad was they had already shot the movie and they didn't have the money to reshoot it. So they had to tweak it in editing. You know, you can do a lot when it comes yeah. to editing. So that's when they went after Bob, went after Jaron, um, kind of went after me, left the others alone and made Nathan Thompson look as crazy as possible. And, because of that, and then, you know, make the title behind the curve, which sounds, it's like, oh, because they're kind of dumb. They're behind the curve. They're kind of right. slow. So do and, you feel that this was their intention? They That they were going to have a whole big fun comedy show with the Flat Earthers, but then they saw you guys and say, oh, wait, this isn't going to be as easy to make fun of them because they're actually pretty smart and live cool, decent lives. I something along those lines. Yes, it started out as a human, a, a standard human interest piece where right. you just follow the people, make it light, and at the end, you have the big finale at the conference. But once they realized that they were, uh, that they didn't like us, they really didn't like what we were doing because, again, they didn't like conspiracy people. Um, the lead producer, for example, had made just before, and I'll be delicate when I say this. She made a documentary about Sandy Hook where she said anyone that doesn't believe mainstream on Sandy Hook is is a nut job. Huh. She was a very like, you know, every they didn't believe in any conspiracies at all. And yeah. so they really didn't like us because following us for the, the seven or eight months was them listening to a lot of other conspiracies. And I threw a whole yeah. bunch at them because I had free time with them. Okay, and that's amazing. Yeah, they didn't they didn't like it. And so, which also worked in our favor because what happened was when they made the movie and they, you know, they took shots and made sure they did that little stinger at the end with Jaron, not that it mattered because the average audience member didn't have any idea what the laser experiment was going to prove. Um, the two things. Okay. So we, we'll, we'll get into the, the film festival thing really quick. For those of you who don't know, 99% of all movies you'll never, ever see because they uh, they can't get anyone to distribute it because they it didn't make the cut. So a perfect example would be the Toronto Film Festival. 3,000 movies applied to the Toronto Film Festival. Out of those, they picked 100. Out of those, 10 were considered, you know, the the top of the, the crop, and then maybe one or two get bought, you know, because everybody in, it, in film festivals, especially the big ones, you'll get people like Netflix and iTunes, and, yeah. and they'll be in the audience quietly taking notes. It's like, okay, are we going to buy this? And they said, and the, even the producers, it's like, not only do we hate flat earth, we don't even think we're going to get into film festivals. They got into every single one they applied to every I'm single one. You can look it up on, you can go to behind the, the curve film.com and look at the film fest. Hell, we were in Moscow for a week and we were, we were in everywhere. We were at every film festival they literally ever applied to from what I could tell. Um, and then, and, and so what happened was, and I sat in on some of these audience studio audiences, right? And what was interesting was for the first 20 or 30 minutes, and it was such a great, great thing to, because of how it was portrayed, people thought it was a fake documentary, meaning it was a peak of pe thing of documentation. Yeah. They didn't think it was real. And I remember I it was the same in every audience I sat in, where it was like, they're watching for 20, 30 minutes, kind of laughing. It's like, oh, it's, you know, it's a comedy because there are really aren't flat earthers out there. Right. And then all of a sudden something, I don't even remember what it was on screen. Maybe it was a montage or whatever. And they're going, Wait, wait a minute. 
this is this is actually a thing and I, I could i could see people elbowing each other it's like whispering in each other's ears it's like i don't think this is a comedy yeah, this is real life this is, we exist this is real and the the capper and i'm sure you've heard this story before was you know there was a producer in la uh, an editor specifically and they gave the movie to him without telling him anything he knew nothing and they let him watch and he's going wow you guys i don't know where you got the funding for this movie Right, you guys are holding out. It's like this was amazing. He goes, "This was amazing." What are you talking to me? He goes, "How much did you pay for this cast? Yeah. This was incredible. All, all the actors, I've never seen any of them, right?" And and it's like, no man, there's no actors in this. This was real, and he just freaked out. He's like, "What do you mean? That conference? That was a real conference?" Um, uh, real quick, it was amazing. Oh, it, I, nobody knew. Nobody. In fact, a lot of people don't know that news organizations will send a recon guy, usually one person two events like this to see if it's real right you know, it's like, you know they'll show up and and there were all these guys and they were there for the first day when we were winding up because it was a two-day conference and i saw these guys on the phone right within minutes after getting there it's like you got to send a team down here right now no matter what and teams flew in last minute flights from everywhere everywhere they came in europe australia they got there as soon as humanly possible to uh or if they couldn't get there because of the flight times they would uh they would hire mercs you know merc mercenary uh, uh journalists to come in and, and shoot you know there are all sorts of um um freelance cameramen i at one point i was wearing three hot mics uh simultaneously and i had no idea how many i mean howard stern sent a freaking team uh, it, it was so it was wow. so nutty but well, anyway all of this all of this was like like the way from the beginning, since the first couple of videos, Flat Earth yeah. had it just generated so much hype, right? Mm. So from the conference and the Netflix, and I feel like yeah. the Netflix tried to to like nip that hype in the butt because this was before all the massive censorship on YouTube. Right, all the channels were still up. I was able to see and find so much stuff back then in 2016. Yeah, good luck now. So <clears throat> they had to create the censorship, delete the channels, make this, this hit piece type movie. Right. But, so when, so you said it kept generating the hype, then obviously yep. the 2020 happened. Right. So, right. So be, be, before, so for the first three years, yeah, what you were saying, we were promoted. There's a couple things happening. You could try to stunt things, but the industry was still growing. YouTube, for example, the biggest network in the world. I mean, you can compare it to anything you want. Yeah, the content doesn't <laughs> isn't the same as like Showtime or yeah. or Apple or any of those guys. But it's but they generate massive amounts of content. They were looking for a binge topic, and they found us. And they and and the the lead programmer from France, and he said this during the documentary, uh, one of the outtakes anyway, um, the social dilemma, where he they were asking him why do things get recommended for you on the side, and he said. And again, I remember, think about this, out of the thousands and thousands of topics that are on YouTube, he picks one, you know, and he picked, he goes, well, if the average person that looks into flat earth for the first time watches 20 videos in a row, what do you think we're going to recommend? Right. And that was true. I mean, they saw the trends and we had just spiked. I yeah. mean, because the, the average, once you go down that rabbit hole, come on, I know people that quit work for days. Just it's like, no, it's can't, it can't be real. I'm going to watch another video. Can't be real. I'm going to watch another video. And the next thing you know, they haven't slept and they, they just keep going and keep going. Same thing as me. So that happened all the way up until 2018. And when we called them out on it, because I was watching the scoreboard. Right. You know, I was looking at relevant search results in YouTube and the numbers were just skyrocketing. I made a series of videos. They are still out there today. You can go and look up the numbers I was comparing it to. We jumped past everybody, Neil Tyson, the Beatles, Lady Gaga, Warcraft, <clears throat> Minecraft. We were just blown by everybody. Oh, it was massive because even Logan Paul got involved with. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Logan well, Paul was no. Obviously, Sorry, he was there to, to mock it. Right. But go he ahead. was. And but yeah, he was there. I mean. Logan Paul was not there by accident. He was, I criticize him because he's a professional idiot, but <laughs> his people know what's trending. And he was one of the first guys on it. So when um, he was our, right? so the what? He, a clout chaser, he knows <clears throat> where, he obviously knew the YouTube yeah. algorithm because he's working yeah. with it and knows what the views and people are searching. So he's like, I got to get in on this too. Yeah, absolutely. And he was, he was our first professional troll. 
uh, one of a number of them over the years. And uh, he came to the Denver conference and he was smart enough to keep it a secret. He paid our promoter to keep it a secret and to let out. It's like, oh, you know, just say we've got a guest celebrity showing up. And then Robbie Davidson, I don't know if it was brilliant by accident. He goes, oh, he's a singer and an actor. And we're going, and, you know, immediately your your mind jumps. It's like, oh my God, is it Will Smith? Is yeah. it is it Jack Black? Who who is it? Right. And he and and Robbie played it coy, right? It's like, oh, I'm not telling. And he didn't. And he just kept selling more and more tickets because people's like, who's the good the guest celebrity gonna be? And we didn't know until the night before. I was already there. I'd already been there for two days in Denver. And my set was gonna be the next day. And uh David Weiss came up to me and he goes, he go, it, you know, we're still trying to guess, right? And then all of a sudden, Robbie just caved in because Logan wouldn't come out of his freaking hotel room, right? He had bought, by the way, he had bought a block of hotel rooms, a block of VIP tickets. Robbie was not going to say anything until the last minute. Finally, Robbie uh, told David, and David said, it's Jack Black. And I go, oh, no, no, no. He, boy, we speculated on Jack Black. He goes, it's, it's, no, he goes, oh, I'm kidding. It's Logan Paul. Wow. And I go, and and I go and and what was funny was he looked at me he goes who's Logan Paul and I go you don't want to know man <laughs> I, I do I have done a lot of internet research over the new uh, over the years I knew exactly who Logan Paul was and I hated him <laughs> I hate a lot of people right and so I said it can't be him if it's him I'm leaving right. Because there's and and not only that Robbie just doubled down. He says, "Oh, I'm going to give him a mic. He's going to go on stage before you." It's like, oh, <laughs> the hell he is. And I and once I found once I confirmed that, I I literally just went to the airport and I said, "Screw you! I'm not doing my set." And he can do it. And and I I was vindicated because three months later he released his own little hit piece and crucified us. Absolutely crucified mm. us. Um, but the caveat was, it's like, yeah, but he didn't get me because I knew. Uh, and but the reason why Logan, if Logan's ever listening to this, is because his demographic is so young. I mean, it's eight, it's junior high boys. Yeah, is that because you know he runs a prank channel? Is that most of our audience who were thirty five or older, they didn't know, they just didn't know who he was. And so, including all the speakers, I try to tell all the speakers like, do not let this guy come. Anyway, so let me let me do the the scoreboard thing really quick. So in twenty eighteen. The only people that were really ahead of us in the metrics were like Katy Perry and Taylor Swift and Justin Bieber, you know, small people, Trump. and Donald Trump, who was the president at the time, yeah. right? Trump Trump was president. And I was looking at the math. And I was going, eh, I think we can get him about six months. We got him in five weeks. And I made a video on it because I, I I wanted to dig the knife a little bit. And I said, uh, I the, the video was called, it was part of the strange world. I, I go, Flat Earth catches the president of the United States. And I showed the metrics. I was going, yeah, we were at 20.9 million search results. And he was at 20.8. That doesn't mean 20 million videos. That just means relevant search results in all parts of YouTube. Yeah. But the fact was we went past him. And I'm going, yeah, oh, I mean, at this rate, we're going to beat everybody. We're, we're just going to keep, you know, again, the 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 pride before the fall and then all of a sudden uh a few weeks later somebody gets a hold of me and they go the scoreboard's gone and i go what they stunt the numbers again is the filters screwed up they go no dude search results isn't there anymore and for the anyone who's at, who hasn't been on youtube over the years it's like you it's search search engines 101 you can go to google and type in any topic and it'll say search results equals this many results mm -hmm. right that That's when the and it began right is well, yeah, I mean, Google Google time? owns YouTube, so this is this has been there literally since the internet started. Yeah, and they pulled that line from YouTube, the whole line for all topics forever. And people, and and I'm going, oh, what have we done? Uh, and people, and people said, oh, you're delusional. They didn't do that because of flag. Oh, the hell, they didn't. That's exactly. And they did it so quietly. It was a hundred percent because of what you did and flat earth and generated yeah. the, the way it just blew up. Cause then I tried to make my first flat earth videos in 2018. And obviously I instantly shadow banned, censored all kinds yep. of warnings. I was like, yep. here we go. All the favorite channels were gone and taken down. So they, they threw the best at Flat Earth. Like we just spoke about Logan Paul. We have all the yeah. news media, Netflix, and they still yeah. cannot hold the truth down, right? Yeah. I yeah. don't hurt Flat Earth in any way. So No, no, Jimmy. I mean, the, the next conference, Jimmy Kimmel shows up. You know, his, oh, his, wow. his, his, team, his team shows up and uh, does the thing. Now, they let us know he was coming. 
uh, but they didn't tell us about the infiltrator, you know, someone that dressed up as a flat earther and paid for the pulp, the full ticket price. But the guy was an idiot. Uh, again, a perf- he was actually worse than Logan Paul because he got drunk by like 9 a.m., actually mm-hmm. drunk. And we kicked him out. I will say this. Flat earthers can sniff out uh, an infiltrator pretty quick, you know, because you can't fake being one of us. Exactly. I, we People have tried. It, there, it's not just something in the eyes. It's your verbiage. It's your attitude. Uh, and you know, like anyone that one of the easiest giveaways is somebody comes up and says, uh, no, I don't believe the earth is round, right? They use the word round a lot. And it's like, no, for flat earth or one-on-one, you know, sphere, ball, globe, that sort of thing. So, and the shadow batting and what you're mentioning, it was easier than, than anyone realizes, which was what YouTube was. They gave prefer since every major channel, I'm not kidding. Every major channel did a flat earth video. They just get preferential treatment to all verified channels. Mm-hmm. So if you have a check mark, you know, once you hit a hundred thousand and you play by the rules, you get a check mark. Very few flat earth channels, uh, got those check marks. In fact, I, I can't remember. There's like maybe two I, and I'm going to have to check again. I'll never get a check mark because I didn't play by the rules because once, you know, the shots in the arm thing happened, yeah. uh, you cannot talk about, um, medical mis- mis- information. Oh, wait, sorry. Let's talk about the Senate hearing really quick. So we were doing, uh, it was, wasn't just shadow banning same time that they killed the scoreboard there was a a u.s government hearing oh about censorship and things that they should probably ban on the internet and they went it's like medical misinformation remember this is 2018 before the medical misinformation really got cranked up um you couldn't talk about false flags you know if there was any sort of event where somebody was hurt or died you can't say that it didn't happen and you also, for whatever reason, they threw in, uh, you cannot say that the 2020 election was faked or was rigged. You could you could not say that. Uh, you you made a video about it, banned, guideline strike. Yeah. And um, and they now they recently pulled that back because it's 2024, it's now an election year, and they realized so many people are going to be talking about the fir- the earlier one that they're, they're might, the, the algorithm might just ban people for just talking about it in general. So they said, okay, for 2024, we're going to let it we're going to let it slide. But I I bet you after this year, you know, 2025, they'll they'll put it in place. But what they threw in at the end, which was so interesting, they said, oh, and we're going to recommend flat Earth less literally said that right during a, a televised senate hearing i'm going oh this can't be good right and and what they meant by that was if you're recommended less that means your monetization goes way 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 down because you're not going to get just random hits and like jaron contacted me he goes he goes is, is your monetization getting effective I'm going yeah the hell it is and and then rob skiba and across the board everybody was reduced if you were making, let's, I'll give you a great example. If you were making a grand a month on YouTube, you were now making 300 a month. That's how bad, that's wow. how quick it, yeah. it got, it got the, cranked down. Wow. The nullified the whole thing or try to at least, especially. Yeah, try to. Yeah. Right. Un- until the, 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 the pandemic, right. Happened. And yes, that stunted us in that we couldn't meet each other in person for a while. I mean, for three years, uh, with the exception of Karen B's conference, Flatoberfest, out on the East Coast, and then eventually in Vegas, um, we couldn't do international meetups because you know, the borders were closed. And then even locally in the States, we, like, for example, Vegas was supposed to be in 2020, not 2023. Right. And Vegas wouldn't let us in because they said, well, yeah, all your people, they go to the conference, they have to wear masks. And we're like, okay, <laughs> that's not going to happen. I go, oh, you're going to, yeah, people wear masks, but then they'll put them in a pile on the floor and set it on fire. That's the only thing that's going to happen there. Uh, so they wouldn't let us do that. And so everything went internal. You know, a lot more content was created from people's yeah. homes. You know, there were some more experiments that went on. And I found, uh, it, I found it harder for, to, to try and share Flat Earth and people in the truth community because during that time I was out there, we were against lockdowns and everything. And I wanted to help push and the flat earth, but people just didn't want to ha- have it. They were like, this isn't the time. Look at the world. we got other issues. So that was another reason to push it aside. So people thought, but they never should have, right? For a year, for that first year when they were just making up rules as they went along, right? And you know, locking down this and shutting down that and all that. That was bad. The first year was bad because you're right. Everybody was distracted by the shot in the arm. It's like... And, and the peer pressure, which was everyone everyone should follow along and do what the government says, right? 
I was like, oh, it, it, wow. that was a tough time for a lot of people. However, once that kind of faded away, there was an interesting thing that happened. The first was that because people were home so much, they were going through streaming services and they were running out of things to watch. And so what happened, you know, they were, you know, if they weren't, somebody else was watching something, remember they were home with the family sometimes. Somebody's watching something on streaming. Well, they're going to be watching something on their phone and people were going down rabbit holes and then recommending rabbit holes and more rabbit holes. That does not take long before all of a sudden somebody shoots a, a flat earth video uh, for you. In fact, at one point, the Netflix documentary, which had gone from highly recommended and made it way down the food chain, came back into the top 10. So behind the curve came back because people were now watching more documentaries. I mean, come on, I, I have tapped you out. Know what that's because of is because what? of the freedom movements during 2020 to 2023 pretty much helped prove and, and tell you that, yeah, the government's lying to you about what's happening. There's no need. The virus or whatever is, is fake. So people looked into other things and says, well, if the government's lying about this, I wonder what else they're lying about. So maybe that was bringing in more people to look into NASA and, and flat earth, right? Possibly, possibly. And I know I'm out of focus here for a second. I'll, I'll see if I can fix that. Yeah, no worries. Uh, come on, you stupid thing. We'll okay. see if it kick, we'll see if it kicks back in. Camera hates me. The uh, I'm I'm one sixty fourth vampire, I think, on my mother's side. Um, so, but yeah, you're absolutely right. And and we got the, the freedom movement really really helped. We never went away. It, we, it, we never went away until the the part where um, uh, it, once the mandates were rolled back. We treated it like, you know, we just never lost a step. And again, a lot of shout out to um, Karen B, who was doing the Flattoberfest, you know, because she wanted to, I will give her credit, you know, it's like, w do a conference no matter where it's going to be. And what she did was uh, she found an event center, a Shriner Center. And so, and people say, oh, you know, the Shriners are run by the Masons. It's like, yeah they are but you know what the enemy of my enemy is my friend and they were willing to do yeah. everything without a mask now grant this was like a a small event center out in the carolinas in a you know country town where they just didn't care you know the whole town was like yeah masks and mandates nah never gonna happen so we never not you know we did our whole thing the employees didn't wear it the event center people didn't do it nobody wore masks the entire time and it was really really cool um and because of that Oh, you're going to try to change perspective? Yeah, maybe that'll, maybe. Maybe that'll, maybe that'll help. The, um, yeah, I don't know what, uh, I could reboot the cam. Yeah, we'll figure it out. The, um, where was I going with this? Oh, so anyway, so, but she, so she never stopped. She, she did the, the conferences down there in multiple venues. And then once the mandates rolled back, we went to Vegas and she was the first person to do a Vegas conference there. And it was awesome. We did it at a casino and a lot of people what, showed what up. Kind of, what kind of numbers are you pulling at these conferences? Uh, well, it depends. It depends on the venue. Uh, on her ones out in um, the Carolinas, I think we were, what, at 400 in Vegas. We were, what, 600 so or so. That, to me, that's impressive because I, yeah. I've, I've flown a flat earth rally here in Toronto. We were able to get at least 20 people right but at least you know we did a mini flat earth march just you know to get something started because there's a lot of flat earthers now awoke, awoken up here in canada but again they're still scared to come out in public or admit it or or let people know that they're now believing this right so right 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 like i figured it out by the way i just reset That's the camera right. the um uh yeah yeah the the numbers i mean come on we our numbers are out there and we just keep growing and growing and growing. And there are way too many. Uh, I understand. I, I, yes, I've said many times that 90% of our community is in the closet because they're, they're worried, you know, the backlash. Well, no different than like the pastors. And I don't want to necessarily get in the biblical thing too much, but Rob Skiba was really, really big on that. He's going, yeah, he goes, it's a tall order. And think of, think of the resistance, the conditioning, the resistance to flat earth. He goes, there's one Bible verse that even hints at the globe even hints at it and the pastors are so scared about what their congregation might do they use it as veto power over everything you know isaiah 40 22 he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth right and they hold on to it with their fingernails and and rob comes at it, it's like it's not like this thing has veto power over genesis but 
it, it is the scariest thing. And the bigger the church is, the harder it is. The, the scariest thing for anyone, I don't care if it's media, if it's an actor, or if it's a television network, or it's a church, you or a comedian, right? When you're in the audience and you say something that, that, you know, turns people's heads a little bit. What the scariest thing ever, again, kind of like the academic community is you don't want people to walk out of the room. You, you feel like you've absolutely failed, which is why, for example, um, academics are, I mean, they have the worst peer pressure ever. Uh, if you know, if you know anybody with a master's degree or a PhD, all they care about is their peer group and being published. And by published, I don't, I don't mean Amazon published. I mean published in scientific journals, which are peer reviewed. The scariest word for anybody in the academic community is ostracized, <laughs> which is, which yeah. is, which is a, a nice way or an intellectual way of saying, you don't get to hang out with us anymore because we don't think you're cool. And we have run into that where there are academics out there that couldn't cross the line even if they wanted to. Which is which is fine, and I try to tell people many times. I don't know what it's like in Canada, but like, look, the math club in any school really small. Physics club really small. Band huge. Glee club, you know, you know, drill team big. You know, football big. Uh, we don't need the math club and the physics club. Wow. We'll just go around, and we'll go around you and and win by attrition. So by all means, you know, fight against us. But sorry, let me throw this in real quick because I know you got more stuff. Which is, um. I've said this to many scientists, and the reaction is always the same. I go, I go. look, I'll give you a hint. You want to try to fight against us in a fair fight? You have to come up with an easier way to explain the solar system than what we did. Because people are notorious for going after the easier things. Jaron's great line. He goes, you want to know how to get rich? He goes, make a way, of people, make a way for people to be lazier. He goes, that's how you get rich, because people all goes for the easy option. And scientists was like, we don't have to make a, a thing that's easier solar system. We don't have to bow down to that. You know, and that's that's beneath us. I go, fine, then you'll lose. We'll win by attrition. Because the because the people that you're trying to convert out there, they want the easier model. And the flat earth model is the and it's like, well, it doesn't mean it's right. I go, no, but it's way easier to understand than your stuff. So fight us if you can yeah. but again the reaction is always the same it's like we don't have to sorry and like we, we're saying it's regaining its speed that's why i loved uh rob skiba because he created a flat earth model one of the first that i saw back then almost 10 years now right. and he referred everything to the bible and that's pretty much my whole ministry crusaders of the resistance uh flat earth was pretty much what helped make the bible more truthful and real again and yeah I wanted to know like what else after waking up to flat earth, the journey afterwards, you said you looked into more conspiracies. So yep. I want to know the, the next ones because I know the next ones that I woke up to. And it was just like after thinking that flat earth was the biggest thing and on earth, it was like, whoa, they hit the big one. You then you find out because now you're in that real realm now. Sure. The fake solar system. Then you start to see things for like I saw Tartaria. I saw the transpocalypse. Um, I saw pretty much the pandemic before it was going to happen. So I was like, yeah, they're about to do something big. The whole world right. is right. laid out. I saw the rise of artificial intelligence. So I honestly feel we're living in the Terminator timeline right now. Sure. So it's unbelievable. Um, so for me, I, I, I kind of worked backwards because I was, I had an opinion again, never got married, have, never had kids. I'm older. And I had an opinion on every conspiracy you could ever think of before I got into Flat Earth because I was there when the internet was young and I punched through uh, just about every conspiracy you could think of up until Flat Earth, uh, you know, and there was a bunch of people that got mad at me that I got emails from people like from the 9-11 community that said that, no, 9-11 is the most important one, right? And uh, I'm trying to be careful when I say this. And he, uh, and they would say, they say you're distracting from that and i go well technically that's just a couple buildings in a city in one country i go flat earth is by definition by scope really 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 huge um after i got into flat earth though i noticed well two things one is that i revisited every conspiracy i ever thought of before yeah. which is what a lot of people do which is okay if you could lie about something this big then nothing's off the table. People would be willing to lie about anything if they oh. wanted. And then it kind of turned into, I don't want to use the David uh, Weiss tactic of auto hoax, which is everything in the name, mainstream news is fake. However, <laughs> saying that, 
everything has some sort of ulterior motive. There's nothing, nothing's in the news, nothing in the news with the exception of maybe a, a, a you know, funny fishing story or a car crash. And even the car crash is not completely hundred percent that uh, there's, there's something else going on. There's a, there's secondary messages that are, that are going yeah. on there. So have you ever looked into Gematria? Because that's what I do. I, you can actually decode these media news stories and it will reveal the coded yep. numbers behind it. So right here, right now, I just want to bring up, because obviously oh, yeah. uh, after that's waking good. up to Flat Earth, it confirmed that this is why. Because I always knew that the moon landing was fake, but I never knew why they would have to fake something like that. What they were what? hiding, what was the purpose, what was the... The gain, what was the control they were gaining in the power? Now, flat earth, it makes sense. So if you put fake moon landing into the Gematria calculator, you right. get that number of the beast, 666. The great globe deception, also Ooh. 666. Nice. The satanic globe is 666. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, which is NASA's full name, equals 666. And then we get Disney and NASA together as also 666 because we know. Wow, I hadn't seen some of those. That's really good. Yeah, a lot of these I actually came up with myself. It's just like, like I said, waking up to flat earth and getting all the downloads of information. I just, and yeah. I've always been good with numbers. So you can see here Walt Disney with Werner Van Braun, Disney, NASA, Nas uh, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the Fallen Angels equals 666 because it's witchcraft, what they're performing, and the Galactic Federation, also 666. So yeah, hmm. Gematria. So I'm glad you you pretty much mentioned the secrets yep. behind the news, and that definitely is a lot. They do date durations. So from, so from, so the next president, we're in an election year, will be, yeah. the winner will be um, inaugurated into office on the 20th of January, 2025. That hmm. will be exactly 666 months to the day of the Neil Armstrong walking on the moon, July 20th, 1969. Nice. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Incredible. Well done. That's, that's good stuff. And yeah, um, the election, I've been kind of waiting for this year for a while uh, because there seems to be, and what I've been kind of focusing on recently, I mean, yeah, of course, you know, I was, I was railing against the pandemic, you know, trying to get people to wake up and that was really tough to do. I had like, I had an entire year of strange world episodes that were pulled off of YouTube um, because they just, they said, Nope. I, and uh, they were, they were nice enough about it to say, you know, maybe you didn't know about our new medical misinformation policy. So we're just going to take the video down. You're going to leave your channel up. But we're gonna pull the the we're gonna pull the videos. Um, the the trans thing for me was more of a division. You know, it was it was small and in the hierarchy, but it was very effective. I will say this: never thought that they could try to make that thing trendy and screw up a whole bunch of people's lives, uh, but they did. Um, l l l well, before I get to the great reset, I want to mention AI. Re re oh yeah, mentioned. we're gonna talk about AI for sure. Um, for me, oh, there were two things. Again, I'm older, so I remember when the AI used to mean sentient, self self aware. That was that was a thing. The I knew that was back in the day, 20, 30 years ago. That's what AI meant. But then they kind of turned it into something else, which was now AI is. I mean, AI objectively is still just a giant data collection device that you can use and and compilation where you can use it to create things pieces pieces and mold pieces together kind of like I, I by the way thank you by the way for the thumbnail and turning uh, marlon brando's face into mine very oh, clever yeah. i used ai see so. yeah i was about to say <laughs> a, ai artwork is really interesting because it's it's not something you've seen before but it's and you, you know you can spot it pretty quickly yeah. You know, it's but it's it's you know like how it interprets things. Is it good for like for example? I, first off, I, I want to clarify. I don't think it's going to be self aware anytime soon, like the Terminator, only because and and again, I'm not trying to be offensive to anyone out there that that may object to this, but from a programmer standpoint, look, I, I was from the video game world. We we'd love to create AI if we could. We can't even figure out a way fictionally to come up with a true self-aware thing because 
remember in the movies, for example, uh, there's only, you know, when, when computers become self-aware and take over, either they just do it and they don't explain it, or it's uh, radioactive goo fell on the circuit board, lightning struck the circuit board, and a ghost or alien entity possessed the circuit board. That's it. And and by that, we can, the only way you can create true self-aware, true self-aware is if you found a way to define ourselves, which is, okay, define how you're thinking, you know, why you have consciousness. And then after you, you spend all that time, see if you can code that. Uh, there's, there's a wonderful thing by a guy, um, the, the movie actually, which taught, which was about his name, uh, called the, uh, the imitation game starring, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. The, the right. father of computers, by the way, was a British guy back in the forties in world war two, that he was the guy that built the first computer to crack the German enigma machine. And when it was done, they tore the whole thing down and classified it because it's like, oh, well, we may be able to use it. But the civilians are never going to use this. So decades went by and then the computer was reinvented. You know, the Americans jumped on it. But that was but that guy, his name was Alan Turing. And the reason why I mention it is he was the guy that came up with the Turing test, which was uh, a, a hypothetical test, which is, you know, that's nothing set in stone, otherwise known as the Blade Runner test otherwise known as the um, uh, uh, the test from The Machine, the British movie, which <laughs> is tests you would give to machines to see if they were actually machines, right? You know, it's questions that you could trip up up. It's like, you know, a machine comes to you and says, I am a living machine. It's like, oh, really? Answer yeah. this, right? And you throw some questions at them. So that hasn't happened yet. We, yeah, there's strides being made. AI right now, is it good for art creation and thumbnail creation? Yes. It is going to destroy the academic world because, in fact, I knew I personally knew a girl uh, from not from far from here who was thrown out of college because in her freshman year, just happened last year, uh, in her freshman year, she decided to use AI to run write one of her term papers, okay. and it was too good, too <laughs> polished, right? And the professor is like, "Yeah, no freshman wrote this, right?" And that's it, and they kicked her out of school. For, wow. for this because like look no they wanted to use her as an example of course you're not gonna be able to start stop the kids because eventually look I'm, I'm clever that way it's like all she had to do was okay i'm gonna write a term paper from say i'm writing a term paper write it from an 18 year old or 19 year old's vantage point uh use two percent grammatical errors and 0.5 percent spelling errors that's all yeah. you have to do no we'll do right? that Instead Smart of giving up, you probably handed in something that was worthy of a Nobel Prize or something. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So. Way, way above her her station. And and she got nailed for it. So AI does have the power to do a, a lot of things. Uh, do I think it's going to wake up one day and wipe out humanity? No. Uh, there's certain things that we can't do. Sort of like the robot problem. You know, people keep talking about, oh, this robot's going to do this. We haven't solved the power problem yet. Don't forget, I, I know I'm doing a pop culture reference here for a second, but I do want to talk about the great reset, which was, remember the Terminator movies, which was, there was a huge plot hole because by the time they got to Terminator 3, it's like, hey, by the way, what's powering these things? It's like, oh, we've got two uh, atomic power plants in his chest, right? You know, in each in each, each peck, right? He's got a, a power plant. And yeah. by the way, if they get damaged, they blow up and it's a really, really big explosion. It's like, okay, well, didn't Sarah Connor like crush one and a press in the end of the first movie? Wouldn't both of those have gone off? Wouldn't she have died? Um, we can't, but the, the what I'm saying here is our battery technology can only go so far. So you can talk about robot dogs walking around the street. The closest we can get is drones. And I will say this, that they have maximized the drones. The drones can do a lot of scary things, you know, the flying little helicopter things. Uh, but, do you think it's the drones that are spraying chemicals in the skies, the chemtrails? Eh, maybe. I don't know. I mean, right now the drones can only what the only thing they've been able, I mean, they're great for camera work, great for surveillance, but they can't lift a lot of stuff. And liquid is very, very heavy. I mean, come on, water is what uh eight point three five pounds uh per gallon. So right. there's only so much you can do there. But what what I've seen recently, the part that worries me about drones is what I've seen over in the military side of things, where you rig basically you use um kamikaze drones which is you hook up, you know, a couple pounds of explosives and you just, because they're not that expensive nowadays and you just fly it into a target. Yeah. And, you know, and, and one of my tanker friends, he's going, he goes, man, he goes, is you throw enough of those things at a tank and you might be able to actually really do some damage. And that's pennies on the dollar and nobody got killed on your side. Anyway, sorry, one more thing, uh, which is the, uh, the great reset. Something I've been, I've been 
focusing on. Yes, you're absolutely right. The group they are trying really hard to do the great reset. Uh, and and again, I'm not and well, you're in Canada, so I can actually say this. Their problem has been and has been a an issue for a number of years has been America. America is you 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 cannot have a great reset unless America is taken down a couple pegs because we tend to do whatever the hell we want. And we've been doing this, but I mean, come on, we didn't even implement the metric system, right? The rest of the world, did the, they tried to do that when I was in sixth grade and we were like, eh, we don't want to, <laughs> we'll, we'll take the ounce and, and the, and the yard and the, and the inch and, and the pound and stuff like that. It's got more character, more flavor, more history. It's like, you can keep your deca, hecka, whatever. We don't care. Um, but America has to be, has to be taken down a peg. And because of that, Look what America's been going through recently. I mean, the the internal turmoil. I mean, don't forget the movie that's coming out here in, what, three weeks? Uh, Civil War 2024 that was made by a British company. You ever seen the trailer for that? No, I'm going to go watch it off. Oh, my I'm God. Gonna... You've got to watch that Where with Kirsten Dunst, which <clears> basically <throat> starts now and says that for, <clears throat> there was internal struggle where states just started seceding from the union and uh, against Washington, D.C. And like 18 states seceded and like California and Texas joined up, which is, I don't know how that pulled off. And it turns into this thing. But and why would you do that during an election year? Why would a British com film company make this movie? Um, yeah. Our election year is going to be, I mean, again, we're, we're coming up. We've still got some time to go, but it is going to be a circus before it's over. I mean, by, yeah. I, my, my yeah, prediction... My prediction really quick would be um, you, you phase out Biden for health issues. They're already doing that now. Uh, I mean, he shouldn't even be considered, you know, for, for health issues. Um, but then you've got Kamala, that, who's going to get a no faith vote. And then again, of course, it was always going to be Trump, always going to be Trump on, on, on the red team side. But then you bring in, and I'm sure you've heard the rumors, you're going to bring in the savior at the last minute, which is who can, who can help out blue team? Who can bring, bring them in? And you bring in Michelle Obama and Gavin Newsom, the governor of California. And I don't even know who would you who would you have point. And it's a brilliant move because it it puts it takes the loophole, which is you can't have a president run more than two terms. Barack Obama back in, you know, he'd be in all the photo ops, he'd be in all the things. And uh, and and why I say that no, I, not I'm dangerous because in the Christian community, Barack Obama is the antichrist. Potential. Well, yeah, I mean. You're right in that aspect. Uh, the, the Christian community would go ballistic. But, and again, I'm not trying to be offensive to Americans when I say this, but but think of this from the great reset standpoint. I know when you're in America, all we care about is America. Nobody else matters, right? However, from the outside, if you're trying to make America look really weak as possible to get the great reset kicked off, what is work? What is better for you? Does Donald Trump becoming president again make America stronger or weaker? Stronger. Well, that's going to undo everything you've been doing for the last four years. So you can't have Trump win again. In fact, having Trump lose in spectacular fashion, you know, because no, by the way, nobody's going to sleep that night on election night because that, that you know, in 2020, that's what everyone did. Everyone's like, just before they went to bed, it's like, oh, he's got this in the bag. He's winning in all the swing states, piece of cake. Wake up the next morning, Trump loses. It's like, yeah, right. Well, then. <laughs> what, what happened? And so th they're not going to do that this time. People will stay up and they are going to lose it. I, especially if they lose, you know, if he loses to like Michelle Obama at, at the last minute or Gavin Newsom or, or whatever it is. So that's that's what I've been kind of focusing on lately, which is the reset. You know, how how are you trying to create this dystopian, everything controlled world? Yeah. How, how would you do that? And um, oh, when was this when was the last reset? Because this can't be the first time they've been doing this before. So have you looked into Tartaria? The yeah, before? I have. And. I've always been a big fan of the uh, the science fiction movie uh, Dark City, which was I think from 1998, and they in fact they used some of the same sets in Dark City that they did in The Matrix. If you've never seen Dark City, you got to really watch it uh, for okay, those out there. Speaking of movies, we yeah. have to talk about the year 1999. Well, the greatest year, greatest year in movies, yeah. the greatest year ever, and it was designed that way. And if you look, some of these movies, I picked out a few of them. And they mm -hmm. all came out in the exact same year, like The Matrix. Yep. Um, we have Artificial Intelligence, Bicentennial Man. Yep. I believe um, 
Truman Show, but that was Truman 1998, Show. but that's around about the same well, time. Close enough, yeah. And then uh, 13th Floor, which I just watched. I don't know how I missed it, but then looking at the list, there's like 100 great epic movies here, Fight Club, um, Eyes Wide Shut. So I watched oh. the 13th Floor, which is... So I counted, there's like five AI artificial intelligent movies and yeah. simulation movies released in 1999. Thank, thank you, by the way, for bringing that up because uh, you're the first person I've ever interviewed that actually offered that, which was 1999. I, I Look, I'm a huge media nut. I have absorbed way too much television and movies, uh, but I try to do it as objectively as I can. And I knew I was there in 1999 I was going to the cinema you know because streaming didn't exist and I realized it's like my god I'm going to a lot to the cinema a lot and I was going multiple times like multiple times during the weekends you know just yeah. to just to catch up and it it objectively is the greatest year in cinema in terms of qual uh, the amount of quality films it was almost like the producers yeah like something was happening deliberately I don't think it was, it was all because it was before the computers took over and green screens really took over every movie right. now. Like people still had to act back then. And yeah. you know, the films then the way the cameras fit, like before all the 4k stuff, like incredible. Right. The, so, I'm glad you saw the 13th floor, by the way, because the 13th floor, which is one of the most underrated movies in terms of concepts is based on a book from the sixties called Simulacron three. And it's like, Oh yeah. Simulacron simulation, which was, Good. Imagine in the 1960s, before anybody had computers, coming up with a concept which was if you created a virtual reality that was so convincing, when you came out of it, how do you know you come out of it? Meaning, you know, again, Matrix stole that. You know, if you were yeah. there was a dream that was so real, how would you know that you weren't dreaming? And they, you know, they turned that into the 13th floor. Initially, it was, by the way, a really ambitious film in the 1970s, German film called World on a Wire. Imagine the Germans trying to make the 13th floor in the 70s. Who in the heck's even going to understand this? I mean, it was might as well have been an avant-garde independent film. But to that point, let, let's talk about virtual reality really quick, which was that movie resonated a lot with me because, and to your, we'll tie into the, the, the reset thing. Has there been, have there been previous resets? Of course. Uh, a, a bunch of them over the years. I mean, long term and short term. I believe. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, let's look at long term really quick. Look at the ruins that have been out there that people have been been finding for for years and years. Um, uh, Bimini Road, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, uh, sunken cities off of Japan, sunken cities Actually, off of India, uh, Puma Punku, Machu Picchu, so on and so on. I mean, we are not the first civilization to be here by a long shot. Yeah. However, the the um, the virtual side has always been intriguing to me because I came from the video game world, right? In the video game world, uh, we've always been trying to create the ultimate simulation. So the Matrix really resonated with the video game crowd. It's like every serious tech company has been trying to find a way to plug in. They can't figure it out because, uh, yeah, it's sight and sounds easy, but the other three senses really, really tough to, to do and legally would be tricky. I don't, I don't know if insurance companies would, would even uh, endorse it, but... Two things really scream out to me, and I'll mention to you, one you know, one you probably don't know. Uh, the first would be, of course, the double slit experiment, which is oh, yeah. uh, a physics thing, which is in the physics world, if you don't know a double slit experiment, it says that things aren't rendering completely if you don't, if you're not looking at it. Right. So if you're looking at an object and you go in with a microscope, it's going to render and render and render and render. However, if you're not looking at it, it's not rendering fully. I mean, and and it's like, okay, what does that have to do with anything? It's like, well, that's what we do in the in the computer simulation world, deliberately to save resources. Yeah. It's the old question. It's like, if a tree falls in a forest, you're not there to hear it. Does it actually make a sound? It's like, oh, once we got into the computer world, it's like, oh no, we know exactly that tree's not even there. Yeah, that, what tree? We haven't. Why would you draw the tree at all? You're not there, right? So why, and again, we didn't know is like art imitating life. So the question is, okay, in the computer world, in the, in the game world, we're, we're creating the double slit experiment situation. Why is that happening here in our world, right? Why is the same exact thing? And if you're, and that should ring some bells. It's like, okay, it's happening in the game world and it's happening in this world. So you have to wonder, it's like, okay, is this world the, the, an objective reality? Exactly. Then, so now, 
that's where we get into it because now looking at virtual reality and the rise of AI and technology, it's starting to look more and more like the 13th floor. And even I've right. caught myself like, could this be uh, some kind of simulation? Yeah, it's real, <laughs> but it's simulated, which explains how it's made, right? And how right. Satan or whatever the dark forces of this world are trying to replicate it and imitate, right? Because it, it's sure. a copycat. Which so, which yeah. is also which is also why it would it, you know there's been certain movies that have talked about it, which is I don't think we as a civilization I think it's part of the the system design, which is we're not going to be allowed to create a matrix situation where we can just jack people in, because once you do that, and there was a Bruce Millis movie that kind of touched on, it, but it was with robots, um, which is. If you create a simulation that was absolutely well, this as good as this or better, no one would care about this anymore. And and by that I mean they would just people people's motivation would just flag. No one would do anything. They would just make barely enough money to pay for their sim their jack in fees. You know their their simulation fees, um, which begs the question: If you're an old enough uh, listening to this, the uh, Star Trek Next Generation, it was one of those running jokes. In fact, Scott Scott Adams, who's caught a lot of hell recently, you know, for for various things, the creator of Dilbert, he wrote a forward to a book, and he actually a fairly insightful guy. Don't care if you like him or not, he's got some insights. and And he said, you know, he goes, the last invention we'll ever build is the holodeck which was from Star Trek Next Generation, a, hol a yeah. holographic deck which you can walk in and do things. He goes, once that happens, no one's going to care about anything but the holodeck, which, again, beg the question, which I love that sci-fi nerds brought up, which is like, why in Star Trek was there no one, why weren't there lines to get into the freaking holodeck? It was always available. Right? It was like, you know, it's yeah. like, oh, well, they scheduled stuff. It's like, no, no, no. That would be like a running theme of the show. You'd be in the people would be in the holodeck all the time. Why? Why would you want to hang around? You know the the normal spaceship. Um, let me throw one more thing at you, which you probably haven't thought of, but you can look it up if you get a chance. There's something out there called um, neuroscience and free will. It was an experiment that that uh, that some people will know about this, which which. Science, you know, of course, scientists just do weird things for no reason. It's like let's let's tape a bunch of electrodes to a guy's head and have him go on a computer screen and pick a number between one and nine, and let's just like measure brain waves and stuff like that. And it got weird because they said, okay, note, you know, it's gonna it's gonna know when you hit the button, but they also said in case there's a gap, in case you're like an indecisive per person, if I say pick a number between one and nine, and you go three, right? Note that if there was a gap between the time you decided to pick three and the time you actually hit the keyboard, most of the time it was instantaneous anyway, right? What they figured out though was they knew when you were going to pick the number eight seconds before you picked the number. And then what I mean by that is like, okay, you know, pick a number between one and five, five, right? And you hit the number. Oh, no, no, your brain waves made that decision eight seconds ago even before you asked the question to yourself and you say that's impossible right because right. there's nothing faster than human thought unless you're talking about something called predestination which means that the kind of a lag where there are things happening it's it may be again predestination if you don't know what it is it means that this world that you're in isn't some random interactive thing in real time which so, kind of makes sense which does is that, does that explain deja vu possibly possibly well why how why would explain deja vu is like how can i do something that's already been done before and feel like i've already done it right so that's right. i could see how that could tie into that i'll, I'll you're you're right you're right on i'll give you i'll give you an example of this which is you may not be in a, we'll do the summary really quick. You may not be in an interactive real time situation. You may be in a pre record. And you're saying, well, that's how's that even remotely possible? Okay, well, think about this. There are kids out there nowadays mm -hmm. who don't even play their own video games. They watch people <laughs> on YouTube playing their own video games. And there's a lot of kids that do this. But even worse than that, they're not even watching, a lot of the times, they're not even watching it real time. They're watching a pre-record. And psychologically, and the dopamine stuff, they're getting almost the same out of it. But then it should click in. It's like, wait a minute. 
I'm not watching something that's tied into a whole bunch of servers interactively. I'm just watching a little MP4 video. Resource-wise, that's an amazing achievement, right? So, so for something like this, that kind of makes sense where either you chose or somebody chose for you the whole path from begin from A to Z ahead of time, at least the, the bulk points. And then of course it would fill in the rest. So it's like, oh, okay, here's how your childhood, you know, and there's a little tragedy and you broke your arm and you got your career and you had some kids and maybe a divorce and so on and so on. You wouldn't have to fill in the little bits like, um, you know, you could say, you're not going to go, wouldn't have to pick. It's like, oh, I'm going to brush my teeth multiple times a day. And then, you know, 0.1% I wouldn't brush for whatever and skip this and blah, blah, blah. That would fill in for you. And that seems to be, again, the the look up, look up neuroscience for, and free will. Yeah. It is an amazing experiment. And science completely denies it, which is it's like, oh, no, it's not what, you know, because science hates the idea of predestination. One more thing real quick. This will tie in also 100th monkey effect. You've heard of it? No, I haven't. The 100th oh my God. monkey, 100th monkey effect. effect. Okay. The what? So tell, tell us about the 100th okay, monkey 100, effect. 100, 100th monkey effect was done years ago. Again, science does weird experiments and then they deny that it ever happened because it's like because they didn't like the results. And so what they were doing was it was out in the I was after World War II and they were uh, doing uh, throwing potatoes. I don't know where this experiment started, but they had a, they were throwing potatoes to monkeys on on the beach. You know these little islands, and they and uh, and they were noticing that uh, a few of the monkeys were you know eating, it, and then a couple monkeys were were dipping the the potatoes in the water to wash off the sand, right? And then more monkeys started doing it, and more monkeys started doing it, and then this is where it gets weird. Once it hit about the hundredth monkey, hence the hundredth monkey effect, all the monkeys figured it out simultaneously the rest of the monkeys and not just the monkeys oh, on that island i've heard of that yeah but all the monkeys that. in the islands around that hey they hadn't even gotten to so when they flew over with helicopters to the other islands and dropped us like instantly oh and no other monkey ever ate a sandy potato ever again and you're and i'm thinking again from a software standpoint my my realm it's like oh yeah beneficial update hot fix instant hot fix because why wouldn't you it was it was approved by something which was like oh look monkeys watching off potatoes because they, they normally didn't have potatoes i don't think and it's like we must make you know because other things I, I who knows if they had to wash it off and then a beneficial update update all uh, all monkeys and i tie that to humans which is if it's not if it's monkey species well it's going to be just about any species in one one aspect or another i think it happens maybe upgrades or downgrades and could it happen with humans why not I mean, yeah, we're more complex to be sure, but why, why wouldn't it? So I, I joked years ago about the hundredth monkey effect in flat earth, which is when you have enough people, and I tie this to the Babylon threshold, which, you know what? I'm going to use the Babylon threshold, but I used to call it the Babylon protocol, but I'm going to call it the Babylon threshold. Babylon you know, the, uh, the, the story, of course, Babylon, you know, where, you know, the first civilization and they don't go into it much. It's a very, very short story, but I, I put it into an entire, I built a whole clue around it, which was. The Tower of Babel, the, the one of the early civilizations here was too good, too perfect. And it was short-lived, right? There was nothing random about these people. They were unified. They were engineering, technologically capable. Um, but worst of all, they figured out where they were in very, very quickly. It's like, oh, right. So we're in a building, and um, that appears to be the ceiling. We're going there. In fact, we're not flying there. We're going to build a bridge to to get there and so the tower of babel you know project g -g 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 nimrod. And they the what wait sorry you're at nimrod so you're in gaming so the first did you know that the first ever gaming computer was named the nimrod oh shocking <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah it makes sense. we're talking about nimrod and the tower of babel so for sure and, and also then, one of the first ahead. expeditions to antarctica was the nimrod expedition uh, yeah. so back in the yeah. 20s i think that one was for so oh yeah and obviously tricks. Apollo is another name for Nimrod. So this whole um sorry, you go ahead. Finish. No, 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 you're thing good. Not, okay, so yeah. So basically you're saying you're a strong believer in this whole artificial simulation, but it's still simulated and programmed as a flat earth with a dome, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, because all because all games are flat. Again, the average person exactly, doesn't yeah. doesn't doesn't notice this, which is I don't care if it's Minecraft or GTA or Warcraft or whatever you're playing. It's built on a flat. In fact, it's not a not even a dome. It's um 
uh, it's a box that simulates a dome. The the sky box, you know, the the sky is literally called a sky box system, and you can simulate anything you want, including curved surfaces. Um, okay. However, true curved surfaces don't exist. That's amazing, because now, because I've been struggling with the Book of Enoch, chapter seventy two, it, it it explains fallen angel, oh, not fallen angel, extra, it explains the science that we should know but it's so hard to understand, but now it's starting to make sense putting in these these other, uh, oh wow, these ingredients to help it come together because the, like I the, said, yeah. chapter 72 explains of the box, the four corners and how the tides and the winds are, are pushed through portals and stuff. It's unbelievable, but it's yeah. starting to, to make sense. And thank you for bringing that up because Enoch, which of course, um, again, the layers like when uh, Rob Skiba got into it, Zen Garcia, one of his best friends, he got into it and Flat Earth solved his Enoch problem. And then Zen Garcia starts doing a whole bunch of books. It's like, oh yeah, that's it. That's the missing thing. He goes, he goes, Enoch doesn't make sense unless it's a it's some sort of flat world, you know. And the Book of Enoch, you know, I used to I used to kid that uh, that I was mad that Enoch uh, didn't make it into the into the official canonized version of the Bible. But yeah. the more I stared at it, I was like, yeah, that book was never. They getting couldn't in. put that in there. They couldn't it, put it in. It couldn't names it. the fallen angels. It explains too much of how we learned science and how to yeah. create weapons for war. Like it explains and, who and gave it, us knowledge. And everything's literal. There's the sun. There's the moon. That's where the wind is held. That's how energy is transferred. Oh yeah, snows over here, rains over here. Yeah. Everything has has its own compartment. And so now, uh, sorry, go ahead. So now putting all that into it, you just mentioned the sun and the moon. Yeah. Are they holograms? I'm leaning more that they are. Uh, I've said for years now that uh, everything in the sky. Uh, it, it might as well be a planetarium. Everything in the sky is just a giant, heavily ornamented, um, uh, sorry, ornamental uh, clock system that predates language. That's all it is. Uh, initially, you start out as, you know, for crops and seasons and, you know, figuring out where, where things are in, in, in the universe. And then the rest of it's for signs and wonders and inspiration. You know, you didn't have to have a moon, which leads into our like our, our early simulations before we made things like Warcraft and Minecraft. The sky, like for example, the sky just lightened and darkened. There was no sun and moon, by the way, which kind of ties into Genesis. Sun and the moon were put in later, right? And then, yeah. and then the stars were, you know, just signs and wonders. The the moon always bugged me that uh, when I got into this, that it was decorated in a way that didn't make sense from physics. Meaning all the craters came in at what perfect ninety degree angles. They were all circular. It's like all all the all the things that hit it. Nothing skidded off. Nothing yeah. broke a chunk off here. Not to mention it's too big. Of course you'd have an oversized moon because if it was too small. It wouldn't inspire many people. Plus it's got to be about the same size as the sun. Yeah, they're it, identical. It, yeah. No. Do, so do I think it's a three dimensional object? No, I I don't. Uh, it, one of the giveaways for that of course, would be the fact that every once in a while, NASA will show us the dark side of the moon, you know, the, the flip side. By the way, another coincidence, I'm not saying God was lazy. I'm saying God led, left some breadcrumbs in there, which is, again, the fact that we see exactly the same side of the moon at all times, right? It doesn't even shift a quarter of a degree in a century. Yeah, really? it's always the same flat picture, right? Look, right. Of, look of it, yeah. I and it exactly fits... It fits in front of the sun, even though uh, Mike Helmick did a wonderful video on it after the 2017 eclipse. We'll see how, what happens after this next one. It's coming up in a few weeks, which yeah. was he called me up and, and he goes, dude, there's nothing eclipsing the sun. He was in the path and he, I go, what do you mean there's nothing eclipsing? He goes, it's not. There's no, there's no, the moon didn't cross it. He goes, it's self-eclipsing. And when he said it, I got it which was, again, and I've been to a number of planetariums, which is, okay, how do we get waxing and waning crescent moons in a planetarium? It's not like the sun is going in front, you know, there's, we're shadowing out the moon ourselves with uh, either pra practical effects or software. And no one thinks of the sun ever doing that because we don't put suns in planetariums. But, and he goes, he goes, that's what's happening. He goes, he goes, it, the, the moon gets there but it doesn't actually go in front of it. It's like it, it's like it just disappears, and then and then the sun shadows itself, and nobody can figure out where everything is, and then it's wow, over. Yeah, and the moon continues itself. So, oh, sorry, long answer to your very short question, which I think they're I think they're two dimensional objects. I do. I do. Could they be holographic? Yes, but then you get into the whole thing of why 
for some reason there's less stars as you get climb altitude and which I, lets NASA off the hook in a way, but at the same time it doesn't because you you like with Artemis, the, you know, one of my questions is why are there no stars in space? You know, Artemis went around the moon. There's no stars. Nobody's ever shown stars when they, um, when they leave orbit exactly. ever. And the Apollo missions, like why, why are there no stars? And again, if you want to say exposure settings, yeah, I get that 1969 because they used film. No one's been using film for a long time. In fact, our camera technology, this is actually way better than people think. Uh, granted, we, again, we don't have robots, ser servants. We don't have flying cars. We don't have ray guns. But our communication technology, oops, sorry. Our communication technology is, um, is really, really good. And our camera technology is excellent. So why are there no stars in space? Trolls, please tell me, why are there no stars yeah. in space in 2024? Can't be. So again, for 10 years, you've been doing this. So you must have been involved in some amazing experiments to help prove the theory of the flat Earth. So what are yeah. some of the top ones that you've been able to, to get involved with? Top top ones uh, that I've been personally involved with. Uh, the big one, of course, would be the, the Salt and Sea experiment, which we shot out uh, with National Geographic uh, off of Los Angeles. That was that was really fun. But I think that's been eclipsed by the uh, the Black Swan experiment off of Santa Barbara, California, which was awesome. You know, the, the oil rigs at six miles and ten miles. The, right. the 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 Salt and Sea was good. You know, that was just another long distance photography thing. But what was interesting about it was. The part that they didn't show in National Geographic, even though Jaron and Rob, Rob Skiba was standing right next to me, um, that we were live streamed it for five hours. Like we were there in the morning and like I called him out. It's like, look, for example, that beach over there with those cabins, you know, at 5 a.m., you could see it absolutely perfectly with the water. And then as the temperature rose over the day, that beach disappeared. And now we can't see the buildings at all. Are they flooded? Are there a lot of people dead? No, the, the atmospheric... Uh, situation has changed and yeah. the other part was the, their whole point was they were going to put balloons in the far end and they did you know the uh, debunker society showed up and they, it's like okay we're going to have these balloons we're going to raise them from the beach until you can see them problem was we could see them on the beach our, our cameras were zoomed in and and we're like in fact we found the balloons for them because they didn't even know wow. where to look and national geographic couldn't use any of the footage they just used their backup it's like okay we're going to take a raft and we're going to put it out halfway in between we're going to hold some sign and we're going to do some rinky dink thing and and make up some stuff it's like the whole first part the whole morning worth of experiments they scrapped because we just blew it out of the that water must have been amazing you must be like wow we just disproved national geographic so oh, we we did which is why we live streamed it where is you know, one, one of those little things um uh the the, the santa barbara i also did um, some laser experiments, which was cool. I was like, uh, oh, those were fun. And then the, um, uh, but those weren't my favorites. Uh, they were easy for people to understand, but the debunkers now, now they're just saying, oh no, the lasers actually bend and there's atmospheric changes here and there. The, the, the big one, if anyone wants to do long distance photography, the best one's on my channel, but it's all over places is the black swan experiment off of Santa Barbara. So there's an oil rig again, oil rig it's not going anywhere six yeah. miles offshore one at 10 miles offshore and they were shooting it from the beach which was i think maybe eight feet up maybe and you know video not just got some still shots and what was interesting was is that the horizon was behind both of them and so then it's like okay what does that mean it's like well the curvature of the earth isn't being applied here meaning uh, the horizon should be in front of it and it should be cutting off both of those oil rigs or at least one of them, at least a six mile one. Yeah. And it's not. And again, the, the denial, I, I don't want to use cognitive dissonance because a lot of people have to look that up. Uh, denial is a powerful thing. It's the most powerful. In fact, it was used in the matrix movie. Denial is the most predictable human response ever. No one wants to believe a world changing thing, no matter what it is. And I've actually had science people come back and say, okay. I, Cause I go, okay, fine. Where's the horizon? Where is it? And they go, it's not either behind the oil rigs or in front of it. It's invisible. And all of this is an illusion. And it's like, no, no, wow. no. And, and it's not, that's not going to fly anyway, because even if you did want to stand by that, the average person wouldn't be able to get it. They believe what they see. And so we go, look, there is no curvature at uh, six miles and 10 miles and the horizon's right behind it. Um, the, my favorite of all time, uh, and it's an experiment you guys can, you can do yourself if you want is, I mean, if you want, you can watch videos on it, which is the vacuum chamber test, which is any, put anything in a vacuum chamber and it'll, a soft thing and it'll explode football, basketball, volleyball, doesn't really matter. It's can of soda. It will detonate. 
right? So there's only one object I've ever seen that has not gone to the laws of physics, which is uh, pressure cannot uh, be next to non-pressure without a hard barrier. Exactly. And that's the space, the spacesuit. The spacesuit defies all physics. And and I again I put the challenge out there and no one has emailed me. It's nine nine years and counting, you know, working on my tenth year. What what in the backpack of that spacesuit stops the vacuum of space from turning it into a parade float and then explodes and then everybody dies? No one will even come up. And I the reason why I know it's correct is I cannot even come up well, come up with an imaginary way, a, a technology way that I haven't even thought of. The closest I can come up with is a force field. But if you have a force field, well, then you don't need a spacesuit. Yeah. So what what is in that spacesuit? And they get away with it because it was on television, which was again, whoever thought of it, this is genius. They go, no, no, we'll just put them in a soft suit. We'll just wave it off. We won't answer any of those questions and people will believe it. It's like, because well, it was on TV, it was on the news. And that's what they did. And it worked. Uh, the spacesuit cannot work in a vacuum. Tell me what technology is being used. And even if you could come up with some microprocessor BS exclamation now, right? Which it can't do or layers. It's like, no, my, my basketball has layers. It still blows up in a vacuum chamber. Exactly. Or, or my ski coat. My ski coat has layers. It's not going to keep me alive. So if that's the case, then how'd you do it in 1969? Oh, sorry, one more thing along those lines, real quick. And I know we're running out of time, but uh, I want to get to whatever last questions you have, which was, here's something. If you, do you know any scuba diver friends? Do you have any people that scuba dive? No, I, I don't swear. I stay away from the water. Okay, perfect, perfect. Well, if you know any scuba divers, and by the way, they, they have two tanks in their back. One is oxygen, one is nitrogen, because remember, we're breathing in mostly nitrogen. It's only 20% oxygen. <laughs> The only thing scuba divers care about, the only thing is this giant oxygen gauge that this, they're constantly holding that's on their wrist. It's like a giant wristwatch, right? And they're staring at it constantly. How many minutes do I have left? How many minutes do I have left? That's all they care about, right? No matter where they go. It's like I have seven minutes left. I mean, they're because you lose track of time. Find me an audio clip from any astronaut on Apollo that talks about how much air they have left. It doesn't exist. No one ever does it. They have unlimited air, apparently. And because as you'd be out there, remember, they were driving that car out in the miles away. If that car broke down, do you have enough air to walk back? No one talked about it. You know, somebody's like, oh, uh, Buzz, we only got 14 minutes air left. We should go back. No one talks about it. And don't give me this crap of, oh, they had carbon scrubbers. It's like, really? Because they had carbon scrubbers that small? Remember, carbon scrubbers, they're on submarines. Sure. But it takes up a whole room. And a huge is a huge amount of power to do it. Do you have portable carbon scrubbers in 1969? If that was the case, we'd have scuba divers that could scuba dive unlimited forever. Yeah. So no. Exactly. So seeing as you're the mayor and the godfather of flat earth, I needed to ask you this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the extra land theory. Is there extra land? Are there more domes? Like I believe. Why, why wouldn't there, Why wouldn't there be? I uh, it. If, if you're going to build one of these, you're going to build a bunch of these. In fact, that, that map right there is kind of fun because, in fact, why would this be the end of our particular structure? Why wouldn't there be an opening? And why wouldn't there be continents outside it? And maybe a second ring or maybe a third ring. We don't know. But, but yes, not only macro and micro. I'm a big fan of that, which is if, if you're going to – if we're not the first civilization in just this area, then – Outside of this area, there's probably more civilizations in other stages of advancement. Uh, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you have a whole room full of these things? Or you want to use the biblical thing, my father's mansion has many rooms. So why not? I, okay. I, I'm, I'm a perfect, yeah. And, and that would answer how, some of the bigger. How sorry, would they ahead. have discovered all of this, though? So say Admiral Byrd, because he was the first one that spoke about the extra land because he did right. the expedition there. Um, how would then like how would they get through the dome if there is one so is there doorways that lead through how would they what like how did they travel and get around to map out other lands or maybe it's this, this, it's, it's it's incredible okay it's one of the older questions which is i'll try to keep it brief are we in here are we stuck in here with other civilizations or are other civilizations allowed to move back and forth through ours Either way, I think there's rules in place. 
So uh, the, the first one, again, I've said it many times, which is, are we a box of kittens that's being protected from what's outside? Or are we a box of scorpions that should never, ever be let out ever? Uh, well, you know the answer to that. I and mean, we've talked about it in our science fiction movies, the original of uh, the day the earth stood still where a big galactic group came in. It's like, yeah, you guys want to go in anywhere. You burn everything down. And I, I don't blame them. However, there are rules to this place. Um, and for whatever reason, the the whatever, and I, again, I don't believe in civilizations from Mars and Venus and Jupiter. I just think of ancient civilizations that look kind of like us, humanoid in nature, but they're not exactly. Some may blend in, some don't. Uh, again, look up the greatest UFO uh, interaction of all time. It's not Roswell, although Roswell is a great story. Um, uh, it's not 1899 Texas. It's 1561 Nuremberg. Look up that wiki page. It is stunning. Uh, the fact right. that two giant flying aircraft carriers just start hammering on each other over Nuremberg, Germany on a perfectly clear day. And then they were there for so long, they sketched the whole thing while eating their toast and schnitzengluben. And then, you know, they, they made newspapers out of it. And it was like this, but they had no science fiction context. They thought it was a religious event. And then the third black angular ship shows up and everyone scatters i mean that raised so many questions it's like okay who are the first two guys who is the third guy you know that showed up why were they afraid of was it the cops was it the un who who the heck was it and not only that the big thing for me was what sort of response time is that i could shoot a gun out this window and within five minutes you're gonna hear sirens right exactly but these guys were hammering over somebody must have found a dead zone some sort of blank spot they said hey you know there's no coverage over nuremberg right now it's like sweet we're gonna rumble and and they must have done it because again the black ship shows up and everyone scatters it was like the the sharks and the jets from the um uh from that musical anyway what else you got we're we're running a yeah. long time yeah we got ended up but yeah pretty much let me just quickly see here um social media like does it work for you because i find it's not working for me it's, and a lot of others depending on some of these these um platforms but what other ways are there for us to to get out there and do our own conferences or rallies like i've tried to you know how can we unite with more cities and more flat earthers because like i said i feel like it's so hard to find other flat earthers they're all like profiles behind the keyboard on right the right right it the the it's going to be counterintuitive when i say this which is but but look i i try to lead by example and by the way i'm not the godfather of flat earth i mean i'm <laughs> up there but i mean i gotta get i'm gonna give credit to eric Dubay because he made a ton of content uh and he just had some different political views and he was in thailand for a long time uh, and then matt boylan i mean he was the big inspiration for me when I was getting into it because his story was intriguing enough that I d went down the rabbit hole, but then I had mm -hmm. to start creating my own things because the rabbit hole wasn't very deep back then. Does everyone um, still get along? Like, well, we still have, we still have infighting, which is good. I, I think in the long term because uh, it's better to be, um, uh, you know, the Roman empire proved this. It's like, yeah, it's you don't want a bored army, right? If people, if you want you, if they're squaring off, it's kind of like the Scottish Highlands, which is like at the end of the day, everybody hates the globe. If you're in the meantime, if you're not working on globe stuff, if you're dueling, that's fine. I honestly, it, better to be busy than bored. Um, however, as far as social media goes, uh, again, counterintuitive, but again, leading by example, which is put yourself out there. If and, and I'm not saying you know risk your family and friends and coworkers. If you've got a lot to lose, then don't. But if you have the ability to put your contact, the reason why people find me and the reason why people ask me to do things and and I get out there more is I I doxed myself immediately. And said, okay, here's how you find me. Now, granted, when I did it, it was because I thought that I was partially wrong. Yeah. It's like, okay, I must have screwed up. But put yourself out there um, or do your own meetup. I, I mean, I host uh, meetup things. I, again, just got back from the Salt Lake City meetup, which was fantastic. They fly me out for it. And if anyone wants to fly me out for any meetup, I don't charge anything. Just give me a freaking air ticket. I'll come out. Okay, I'll be sure to to email you and figure something out because seriously, I I, to, yeah. I don't I don't mind, but you can, anyone can do their own meetup. It's so easy nowadays. Patricia and I thought it was so hard to do back in the day, which is you just find a bar or a library or some sort of meeting room that's fairly quiet that doesn't have booming music because flat earthers will talk. You know, they'll they'll bounce stuff off each other, and then put the invite out there. There's there's we've got a wonderful infrastructure. You know, flat earth festivals, my channel meetups.com people will find you eventually and of course david weiss's flat earth sun moon and zodiac clock app 
yeah. which he has worked on for so hard or for so long and it's and it's great it, that really 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 helps too so the last question this is the yeah. last one i wanted to know from your point of view other truthers like we know about like Alex Joneses or David Ikes I used to listen to, but when I woke up to flat earth and these guys are still talking about lizards and, mm. and you know, it's like, how, how is there a separation in the truth community with some of us woken up to, to flat earth and some, and the others are like, no, no, I believe the science, you know, I don't understand that. The old guard, it's something I like to say, which is everybody's got their own wheelhouse, right? There's stuff you're comfortable with. And there's stuff there you're not. Uh, Richard Hoagland, a great example. You know, he was one of the few that that kind of got wiped off the map when we came on, because he was like, "There's two million people living on the moon. There's a million people living on Mars," and we come out. It's like, uh, no, because there is no moon, and Mars is just a light in the sky. But it was a nice story, so thank you for playing. Um, with the other people, it, they're just the old guard. That's that's it. You know, if you're if you're uh, in your groove kind of like you know what i'm going to compare it to the glam rock bands for when w after grunge came out a lot of people don't know this like when nirvana dropped their first album there were a lot of glam rock bands that just stopped touring <laughs> like that's it we're not doing the rest of the tour we're done it's over uh when flyers came on the scene uh david ike you know all those other guys again not going to poke too much at alex jones uh, you know he's got his personality he's got a good act um but they, they, everyone was knocked down a tier and it's like, look, because flat earth physically is the biggest thing that's out there. So if you want to keep focusing on lizard people, Hey, fine. But again, they, they just, part of it is because they've got their audience base and they're nervous about jumping on something else that might risk their audience base that they've, uh, they've established for so yeah, long. Yeah. So Kent Hoven was a great example of that. You know, when he came out of prison for tax evasion, Oh, Kent, what were you doing there? Uh, and then said, uh, you know, it was, it was like that hand solo thing where it's like he came out of carbon freeze and Kent's like flat earth. What do you mean? That's a thing. How long have I even been in? It's like, it's, I, and he's had to deal with it ever since. Cause everybody, cause biblically people have been asking about it. So look, the, the, it, there's not so much of a disconnect. They know what's <laughs> out there. They just don't want to put it in their, uh, put the spotlight on it because they're, again, they're worried about their own audience. So yeah. it's like, ah, eh, we don't worry about them. We, we generate all sorts of things. And if they want to come on board, great. If not, we'll, we'll take the new celebrities in, in the meantime. I actually get, I get more of a kick out of mainstream celebrities that just talk about it. You know, like the kid from Texas Tech last week, you know, during the draft combine. He was like, oh no, oh, solar system, planets, that's not a thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, how, how'd you get into it? Oh, yeah, so yeah, so. honestly, thank you, Mark Sergeant, for, for everything. We're gonna end the show now. Thank cool. you for speaking with us. And we went over a good few things in a short amount of time. Um, yeah, it's been great. Um, the army is growing. Um yep. Yep. It, it's it's never gonna go away. They can throw their Netflix and their their YouTubers, their Logan Pauls, or whoever they want. It's not gonna knock the flat earth, it's just getting bigger more people are rising there's more faces becoming involved in it like even yep. though people will still forever be scared of whatever reason but yep yeah this is your 10 10 years and yeah the next couple of years are going to be uh, amazing so i'm yeah. looking forward i uh, hope to join forces with you soon and and do something together along the, the flat earth and whatever cool. else might come along so well thank again. you it was so, it was a pleasure thank you I had a lot of fun yeah, I just want to show everyone your channel quickly. So here's my. Oh, yeah. and, by, and by the way, you can just, it, the channel doesn't matter as much to me. Just type in Flat Earth Mark into any search engine and uh, you'll you'll go down the rabbit hole and eventually get to me. And you know what? There's so many content creators. Do not ignore them. Uh, you know, go. There's so many great people out there. Go to all of them. Anyone that, that takes you to the right path. If you run into me, hey, great, fantastic. But I'm the recruiter. Uh, the advanced stuff is out there with other people. Sweet. So yeah, Nancy, we got someone Nancy says, thank you, Mark Sargent for coming out. I have learned amazing things today from you. Best interview. So thank you. We'll end it with that. And yeah, I'll let you go. So thank you, everyone. You know, I'll see you soon. Uh, take care and enjoy the rest of your day.